So it's spring and birds are chirping, flowers are beginning to bloom. And the other exciting thing that's happening is students are receiving their college acceptance letters. So that got me to thinking, how are Harvard students making it to and through college? And I thought of Harvard Youth Scholars. If you haven't heard of this organization, come on. I'm giving Anthony Byers and Roxana Ruth Miller room to talk. Harper Youth Scholars is, uh, well, thank you for, for being here and seeing our, <laughs> our wonderful abode here. Um, Harper Youth Scholars is a college success program geared to supporting Harper students to and through college. That is the name of the game, um, that students come through our program, receive 10 plus years of support so that only they are, so that they're not only accessing college, but they are completing college successfully. So, Roxana and Anthony, you are leading this organization together. Um, so, your titles are essentially co-executive director. Yeah. Why, why, why a co-directorship? Um, I'll, I'll speak a little, and we have a great partnership, so I think we'll fill in the gaps for each other. Um, it really came out of necessity for the organization at the time that we were both here and, and um, there was a leadership transition. And so initially the idea was really um, something we do a lot, which is a pilot. We're like, well, acting, we'll try it out. So the board entrusted us with the leadership of the organization uh, almost seven years ago. Mm -hmm. And so after not even a year, I would say, it was clear that um, being executive director, as anyone knows, is a really big job. And it's really hard, I think, for any one person to do that and um, be successful. I know a lot of people in Hartford do, mm -hmm. and it's great, but I think they're, they're running and they have a great team. And we just split up the leadership duties a little bit differently and um, looked at each other's strengths. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we were able to, in a short amount of time, really move the organization and make some great decisions together, mm -hmm. um, have some different perspectives. Um, and in, you know, really complementary skills. So we in, engaged and energized our board. Um, Anthony, the way we split the job up is that Anthony focuses on the programmatic side, the academic side, um, and then I focus on the external relations, fundraising, and public relations, and we share a number of things. Um, it's really seamless. I don't know that it would work for everyone in the world, I think it's, but I think it's worth exploring for different organizations in terms of how you balance work life um, and you know manage the really as we talked about unending um, to-do list um, right. if you really ta you know um, tackle things and um, put the best people on the best projects um, for their skill set I think you can accomplish a lot more and it took us a long time to sell some people on this concept mm -hmm. um, in terms of that it, it worked um, but I think the results both academically and externally in terms of our fundraising and our work in the community and the knowledge about our work in the community is growing. Um, the success of our students is, you know, phenomenal. Um, the kind of results we're seeing them achieve. And so I think, the, the, as they say, the proof's in the pudding. Yeah. That's right. The only other thing that I would add to that, because I think you hit all of the points, um, is that it's kind of a trickle-down effect. Um, because we share the leadership role, um, no one person has a say that's larger or greater than, you know, our mission, right? Um, and, you know, it's really trickled down from the top, the top, you know, even to our staff. I mean, we have a really great team mm -hmm. of people that work together, and I think it starts with our ability um, to work together and, you know, keep it student-focused, right? And I think a lot of times... You know, folks' own individual agenda or vision, you know, kind of gets in the way of what the real meaning for or reason why you're doing this work. And, um, you know, I, I, one of the things that we decided on, you know, when we started um, kind of working together is that the people that we bring into this space and to do this work, you know, have to be willing to buy into the team. Right. And to the that, you know, yes, you have a specific role and you have a specific duty um, that, you know, you focus on high school and college programs or, you know, recruitment or grant writing. 
right? Um, but we all collectively sit around this table um, and, you know, make decisions that are in the best interest of our scholars, irregardless of, you know, what hat, you know, um, you're wearing in terms of, you know, leadership or what have you. I'm curious about um, how you show up for this work, too. Like, are, do you, what drives you? Um, is, it, is it what you see? Um, is it a social justice issue for you? Um, if you could speak to that a little bit. Like, what is behind you, um, like, being so committed to this work? I see myself in every single student that we work with, right? Um, you know, I'm from Hartford, um, you know, and it was because I was fortunate enough to have, you know, two caring parents and a ton of support and um, an educational opportunity, um, an equal educational opportunity um, that I've been able to see any level of success, right? Um, I was a capable kid, I think. Um, that, you know, had potential, um, but, you know, first generation college, right? And, you know, my mom and my dad, although well-intentioned, didn't always know the way, you know, to how to get me there. And uh, they just really wanted me to be in a better space than they were, right? And that was their goal, um, as opposed to, like, you know, sh showing me the way. Right, um, and that, there's a, there's a difference bet between those those two things, and um, you know I, so that's what Harper U Scholars is, right? It's you know providing an educational, an equitable educational opportunity to kind of you know fill some some gaps or to continue to push, you know, for those students that want that, you know, and that need that or crave that, um, but then, you know, for those that don't even realize that they could be doing more. Um, we're providing that support to say, hey, look, you know, you, you're doing this awesome, great, but, you know, you could, you know, be doing more. And this is, this is what else is out there for you. And, you know, these are, you know, opportunities and we're a gateway to, to, to those opportunities and, um, and, and just leveling the, the playing field. Um, you know, it's very, I think it's very simple for me, though it took me probably 20 years of a career to find my way here, which was sort of the perfect nexus uh, what I love to do, which I, I love philanthropy. I love connecting with people. Um, and you know, that's probably the baseline for me in terms of people who want to do something to find someone else who, you know, who needs something done, um, networking and things of that nature. I love making those connections and seeing things happen. So I love the work of philanthropy, which I had been doing for 20 years before coming to Hartford Youth Scholars in various capacities. Um, and then I came here and it was, you know, synergistic in that I think for some fundraisers, it's a job and, you know, and for me, it's not, I need to feel very connected to what I'm asking people to support. Um, you know, I, not a very good hired gun. Um, and I'll, you know, in the simplest way to say, um, my path led me here because I've just been a very in my life I've been very fortunate and I had every opportunity um, growing up um, to you know it wasn't a question if I was going to go to a good safe learning environment that was guaranteed it wasn't a question if I was going to get to go to college it was a question of where I was going to go to college um, and those are you know significant advantages and it, for me and if you look at it and you flip that there are significant inequities to our society that by the nature of where I was born and who were my parents, which I had nothing to do with, um, you know, I had a much easier path to walk on um, in terms of all of these things. I, you know, I've, I've seen a graphic um, that's very powerful about walking around a track um, and it talks about based on where, you know, you start, if you're a person of color, if you're a Latino person, you know, there are, there are benefits just born into our society and there are inequities. Um, and I think that's where I focused on it. And then, you know, it probably took me not more than a few months and actually the thing that changed it for me was meeting scholars. Um, and, you know, meeting, you know, it, it, people talk about um, things change when it affects someone you know. So the minute I got to know a scholar, the work became that much more important because I saw the potential in these young people that they had. We didn't need to do anything. Um, I mean, we need to 
provide an environment for them to learn. But they had everything inside of them, just like any student in Avon or West Hartford or anywhere else that they might be. And they just needed someone to show them how to access it and give them the space. One of the other things that I wanted to mention, too, now that you, you mentioned scholars and I was thinking about this, is that um, it's also about the relationships that we're able to build. I mean, you know, um, we work with a relatively small amount of students every single cohort. We accept 30 students every year. We have 250 total. Um, but that really allows us the space to get to know these kids, right? Get to know their families um, and take an approach that is specific to what that student needs, right? As opposed uh, to a, you know, I mean, what made me tick and the support that I was able to receive as a kid was different, you know, than the next student. And it was different from another student. And, you know, I was, I was able to have that individualized kind of attention to, you know, my needs, right? And to, um, and I, I love that, you know, we're committed to, you know, our scale and, and we're committed to our scholars um, because, you know, it, it allows for us to take a tact that, you know, if we were, you know, triple in size, yeah. it would be a lot harder, you know, for, for us to do with our, our, our small our small group. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I see students now that, you know, I mean, from our first cohort of scholars that, you know, work here as interns or that, you know, are off, you know, kind of in the world being adults. And, you know, it's just, you know, in the relationship that I've had, I mean, it's, they, they, some of them still call me Mr. Byers, and it's just like, no, we're, you know, you're like my colleague now, you know, like we work together. You, I'm AB to you now, you know yeah. what I mean? And, but you know, it's a relationship that you know I, I've been able to build, and one that where they can still kind of look to me or Hartford U scholars as a resource, um, but you know, really take a full appreciation of you know what Hartford U scholars has meant um, for for their success. So. The, all the strategic and important work that went into this project, this concept, like it, it works. You know, it's a proven concept now in terms of the numbers of students that go to college, that graduate college, and we're still in our infancy, you mm -hmm. know, in being 12 years old. We mm -hmm. literally just have those first, we're coming up on our third class of students who will graduate high school and go to college, or excuse me, third, third class graduating from college, college yeah. and our seventh class of students who are graduating high school and going to college and you just you have this you know pipeline of talent and mm -hmm. ideas and creativity mm -hmm. and you know and then they feel ready to take on the world yeah um and it's it's just you know proud right. you know moments for yeah. all the work and i would i would do it all over again yeah, I'm, I'm super and i will keep doing it all over again every day I'm also super proud about where our students are going to college, right? I mean, our students are going to college. 97% of our students are um, enrolling into to four year colleges and universities. Um, but it's, you know, we. And 100% graduated, graduated from high school. From, from high school. Um, so we're seeing students, you know, go to, you know, literally Harvard's and Yale's. Um, but we're, we're equally as excited about those students that are going to other places, you know, Central's and Trinity's and. Um, UConn, you, and UConn, Eastern. Eastern, you know, um, and and students are genuinely. I mean, there's no, you know, resentment or jealousy about you know where a student is going. Everyone's happy for the next student because I think you know, uh, throughout this whole entire process, of, you know, especially I think maybe even it even started as early as like high school placement, right? That it was it's about the fit. For the, for the student, and this is the right place for them, right? Um, and they can be successful wherever they land. And, and I think we've done a good job kind of throughout, you know, um, the program to introduce our scholars to professionals that have been successful from a bunch of different backgrounds, right? So, you know, wherever you go to college doesn't necessarily define who you are and who, where you'll be. Um, and I think our scholars understand that. Um, but, you know, even this year, I mean, the, the wide array of colleges that our scholars have gotten into is just, you know, amazing. You know, I mean, from your Browns, Columbia's, Emory's, um, and, you know, we got Trinity's, we got Skidmore's, we have Cornell, East Cornell, East Howard, you know, just a wide array, you know, of, of colleges and universities. And, you know, students are just kind of driven to, to want to succeed and um, 
you know, we created a college going culture. I mean, and I know that, you know, um, college isn't for everybody and I'll be the first person to, to tell you that, you know, um, but for those that, you know, really want to go to college, you know, I think, you know, we've done a great job of creating an environment where, you know, that's the ex expectation here, you know, and, you know, you're supported by not only, you know, staff and, and faculty to, to help you see those goals, but you're also you know, supported by your peers, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, in that process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So one of the things I realized in talking to you both, and this is just, I'm, I'm bubbling with just like your energy, but just the work that you're doing. Um, one of the things I realized is uh, we have to do a part two. Because <laughs> <laughs> we run out of space? We are, we are out of time. Uh, yeah. But I would love to talk further because... Yeah. Um, no, come back and visit us again and yes. or we'll visit you or yes yeah. um yeah. but no let's keep the conversation going because it's that's the exciting thing is like tracking right. you know that group of students and the story continues i just read last okay. night um an old story now because it's a couple um two years old but it popped up on my facebook about when our first group of students were going to college yeah. so it was six years ago actually yeah. um and just hearing talk about it, you know, Rick Green did a wonderful article on them, mm -hmm. um, but it, it's an unfolding story, yeah. so there's more to it, and um, we'd it's our like favorite to, talk thing to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's a date, it's a plan. Yes, thank back. you so much, Naisha. <laughs>